Nature's Hot Tub, tomorrow at 7.30. Good evening. Our top stories this Wednesday night. A plane crashes into a house and the results are disastrous. And a desperate third heart transplant is underway at this hour for a dying man. Jess Barlow, Sandy Hill, Jim Hill, McLovio Perez. The Channel 2 News tonight. A small twin-engine plane slammed into a house in Sepulveda tonight, sending up a curtain of flames. The pilot is dead. One of the occupants of the house is injured. The disabled craft apparently was trying to limp into Van Nuys Airport, but missed. Channel 2's Ann Curry is on the scene. Ann? Jess, investigators have still not been able to confirm if there were any more victims. They are still trying to piece together what happened. One man was inside this house watching television when the plane came down, exploding on impact. Richard Vutala is an eyewitness. And, uh, I ran out inside the house the minute I heard the explosion and looked up and saw this tremendous ball of fire. The flames soared 40 to 50 feet high, say neighbors. The man inside got out and was taken to a nearby hospital. The pilot did not get out. His body was found on the wreckage. The Van Nuys Airport tower heard him last. That his engine was quitting on him, uh, that he was going to try to make it to the Van Nuys Airport. He did not know if he was going to be able to or not. The explosion caused neighbors to run out of their homes in fear. Eugenia Oberly lives directly across the street. Of course, I was shaking and uh, the thought came to me it could have been any one of these houses here. Uh, it could have been our house. It's pretty scary, especially when it sinks in. The neighborhood is directly in the flight path of the Van Nuys Airport and seeing what the crash has done to this home is reawakening concerns among some who live here. I noticed that, that there's more planes in the air, more, more planes in the area, more planes, more planes landing, and uh, they just seem to be getting lower, and, and just they seem to be flying out of the pattern. This is not the first time a plane has crashed in this neighborhood. Neighbors remember only a few years ago, a plane crashed less than half a mile away on Havenhurst. Now, the Van Nuys Airport is considered to be the third busiest airport in the nation. We can report tonight that the man who was inside this home, 38-year-old Ken Ashton, has been treated for smoke inhalation and released from the hospital. The dead pilot has not yet been positively identified. I'm Ann Kerr reporting live from Sepulveda in the San Fernando Valley. Now back to you in the newsroom. All right, Ann, thank you. Meanwhile, the search for the killers of U.S. Drug Enforcement Agent Enrique Camarena Salazar is in high gear tonight. Camarena's body was one of two found by a roadside in a remote area of Mexico last night. Today, it was positively identified as Camarena. The other was a Mexican pilot who worked with the agent. The site is near a ranch raided by Mexican police last Saturday. They raided it on a tip that Camarena might be there. Six people were killed in that raid. Camarena disappeared in Guadalajara a month ago. Coroner's office in Zamora says the bodies had been dead for about 25 days. U.S. officials say they have few clues about who or where the killers are. There's certainly no let-up in the Mexican drug wars. Half the police force in a small Mexican town, dead, killed in an ambush by suspected drug traffickers. The shooting broke out after police stopped a tanker truck suspected of carrying marijuana. Gunmen jumped from a car following the truck, opening fire before police could respond. Six officers and a civilian were killed. Up to five suspects remain at large. Three others are being questioned near the U.S.-Mexico border. That border has been the scene of tension in recent weeks as U.S. officials try to crack down on drug trafficking. That crackdown has had a sharp impact on businesses along the border, as Channel 2's Dave Lopez reports. Officially, the border crackdown is over. But long lines still exist, anywhere from a 35 to 45 minute wait to re-enter the United States. And the number of tourists going into Tijuana to spend their money has dwindled down to a precious few. At noon today, in downtown Tijuana, some merchants try to remain busy by reading or playing backgammon. Business is bad. Has there been a real heavy decline in your business? Oh yes, a lot. About 50 or 70 percent. There is no question the border crackdown has caused this economic drop, but the merchants are not angry with American citizens. We're not angry with the American people, you know. It's between governments, not people. How did you find the, the crowds compared to uh, the last time you came over? A lot less people now. Really? Mm -hmm. Were people just as friendly in the shops? Oh, yeah. They were pretty friendly. I didn't feel any different. 
No. Just the same as before, only uh, less population is a little more comfortable this time, perhaps. So just when will this economic slump end? Some Tijuana businessmen, the optimistic ones, say at least two more weeks. The more realistic ones say at least another month. But whatever, most of the Tijuana businessmen say it has been at least 20 years since this type of business slump has hit the border town. Dave Lopez, Channel 2 News, on the U.S.-Mexico border. And we have this story just into our newsroom here at Channel 2. At least five explosions hit the Nicaraguan capital of Managua tonight. The state radio reports at least two fires are burning, one near an oil refinery, the other in downtown area near the Intercontinental Hotel. The radio is calling on Nicaraguans to place themselves on what is termed battle alert and to put themselves at the orders of police. Officials say no one has been killed or wounded. State radio says that explosives did cause the blast, but it's still unclear whether they are the work of terrorists or whether it was an accident. Meanwhile, some Nicaraguan rebels are here in Southern California tonight. They're fighting perhaps one of their toughest battles yet. That is the one for American support. Channel 2's Tony Cox reports that they ran into a lot of opposition. Several hundred demonstrators paraded along Wilshire Boulevard in Beverly Hills, where inside the Beverly Wilshire Hotel, Contra leaders attended a $100 a plate fundraising dinner. Their goal to raise private money while they continue their efforts to woo Congress into giving $14 million in aid. Appearing on Channel 2's Newsmaker program, Adolfo Calero said tonight, his anti-Sandinistas are not puppets of the CIA. We are in charge. Definitely we are in charge. And we are the ones who know uh, what to do and how to go about uh, doing it. There is strong public sentiment on Nicaragua, both for and against U.S. involvement. The Contras, aware of that, are trying to convince U.S. lawmakers to assist them with millions of dollars in aid. But those same lawmakers are sensitive to public opinion. And if tonight's demonstration is any indication of that, the Contras have a great deal of convincing to do. Tony Cox, Channel 2 News, Beverly Hills. Well, American farmers are going to have to come up with some pretty convincing arguments, too, if they're going to successfully fight President Reagan's veto of a bill to aid the debt-ridden farmers. Protests in Washington's did no good today as the president struck down the multi-million dollar package. Mr. Reagan said his veto curbs excessive congressional Someone spending. Someone must be responsible. Someone must be willing to stand up for those who pay America's bills. And someone must stand up to those who say, here's the key, there's the treasury, just take as many of those hard-earned tax dollars as you want. House Speaker Tip O'Neill conceded the House does not have the necessary votes to override the veto, but farmers vow their fight is not over. San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies have a new lead in the case of Laura Bradbury, who's been missing since last October. The three-year-old disappeared while on a camping trip with her family at Joshua Tree National Monument. Authorities are working on new information from witnesses who were camping in that area. We are here in this area looking for a man who was in that campground approximately two weeks previous to her disappearance. And the information we've been given is that the man is uh, approximately 60 years of age, of average build, believed to be from the Santa Rosa area. The man spotted at the campground is being sought for questioning. He is not considered a suspect at this time. Crime and controversy are apparently following L.A.'s street cruisers. Cruisers driving their hot rods crowded Elysian Park tonight until the LAPD came in and closed the park down. That forced the cruisers out after they became a nuisance. The traffic was so congested that the, there was no entry or exit for anyone, causing a uh, safety hazard. The cruisers have been barred from the San Fernando Valley and East Los Angeles after neighbors complained of noise, vandalism, and rowdiness. Well, now neighbors in Elysian Park, including a hospital administrator, have the same complaints. It blocks the traffic. And this means that many of our employees who have to come to work here cannot get here on time. Well, the leader of the street racers, that's Willie Brown, says he's been trying since 1966 to find some neutral area for his cruisers, but so far his efforts have met with no success at all. We have more ahead here on the Channel 2 News tonight. A man is getting his third heart right now, but the surgical team may have broken the law. A word of caution about baby formula. It may be hazardous to your infant's health.
And Gary Franklin peers behind the mask, Cher's newest film. Dear Rocky, um, I miss you. And you're away at camp. You're not in your room. The difference is visible. The difference is visible. Visible difference from Elizabeth Arden penetrates moisture 20 cell layers deep, almost to where new skin is born. And in just 14 to 21 days, a dramatic change will take place in your face. The difference is visible. Only Elizabeth Arden can call a face cream visible difference. Custom Face Kit 750 with a $10 purchase at May Company Now. There are two ways you can get a state smog check on your car. The hard way, run all over town trying to find somebody who'll check it. Then if you fail, run all over town trying to find somebody who'll fix it. Or the easy way. Just come to one of the many convenient MP&G tune-up and official smog inspection centers. A smog check is only $19 and a complete tune-up just $39.95. So don't run all over town. Simply stop at MP&G. The new BMW 735i has an ingenious anti-lock braking system for stopping power far beyond the merely adequate. A new 3.5 liter engine and a highly agile suspension for considerably more than acceptable performance. The new 735i exceeds the acceptable in many ways, but then it wasn't built to be adequate, it was built to be a BMW. Test drive the ultimate driving machine at your Los Angeles area BMW dealers. At this very moment, doctors at the University of Arizona are giving a dying man his third heart transplant in 36 hours. The second of the three was an unapproved artificial heart. Tonight, another human heart was found. It was flown to Arizona. Earlier, the unidentified man's body rejected one transplant, the human heart, leading to the unauthorized transplant of an artificial one. I think that all of this fault or all about all of this is nothing more than a group of doctors that were faced with a patient who was dead if we didn't do something. Now, the Food and Drug Administration uh, tonight says that the surgical team violated federal law by implanting that artificial heart, uh, which has not been approved yet. In our Health Watch tonight, a report critical of uh, infant formula, suggesting mother's milk is a better formula for most infants. The report comes from the New England Journal of Medicine. It criticizes the sterilization process used for canned baby formula. Apparently, it removes certain antibodies that fight rotavirus infections that can cause there diarrhea. Is antibody in mother's milk, in human milk, um, and that this has been shown to protect against rotavirus disease in babies. A study suggests altering the way baby formula is processed the companies who make that formula say they're looking for other ways to sterilize the milk and may, and may put those antibodies into the formula artificially. Well, it's expected to get a lot worse before it gets any better along the Illinois River. Many towns there are literally buried in water tonight. In Peoria, the swollen river is 10 feet above its banks and it's expected to rise even more by the weekend. The record floods have forced thousands from their homes so far. Here in the Sierra Nevada mountains, it is heavy snow that is causing all the problems. Tonight, avalanche warnings are in effect as three to four feet of new snow threatens to come crashing down. All the major roads are reportedly open, but there is very poor visibility and lots of drifting snow up there. The high Sierra storms are expected to ease just a little bit at least by the weekend. Mm. Because it's headed this way, Maclovio. <laughs> <laughs> well, I th persistence, you see, if you keep talking about rain, maybe eventually it'll get here. The storm that has made us look uh, a little silly here for the past two days may just be rolling into the Southland uh, by tomorrow morning. As early as tonight, they've been updating the forecast, picking up the rain chance to 50% from a 20% earlier this afternoon. Here's the analysis. There is a front. The storm is moving on shore. To give you an idea of the cloud cover, early this afternoon, San Francisco is about right here. We're about right there. Uh, you'll see how the cloud cover gets rather thick. Late this evening, there is rain from right off the coast of Paso Robles all the way down to Santa Rosa Island. That activity is drift forecast, drift into our area tonight and decreasing tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, in the Sierra, two to three feet of new snow has fallen in the past couple of days. Around the nation, the eastern coastal states have very mild weather, while the west 
picks up another round of winter. Here's our local forecast for tonight. We're looking again for increasing clouds and an increasing chance of rain. Probably after midnight, uh, extending through the morning hours, snow level will be down to 4,000 feet. Showers ending by tomorrow morning, partly cloudy and breezy for Thursday, partly cloudy and chilly again on Friday. Overnight lows in the 40s, and tomorrow's highs generally, uh, generally around 60. You don't believe me, right? Wake up in the morning and we'll all see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, Sandy. Thank you, Mac. Coming up on the Channel 2 News tonight, the Clippers get a new skipper, but it's still not smooth sailing. Jim Hill has that and all the sports. Plus, Gary Franklin with a review of Mask. Uh, Cher lays it on this the line. This is a copy of our lease. This is a copy of Rocky's birth certificate, and this is his last report card from Stevens Junior High School, where he was in the top 5% of his class. Hi. Hi. Guess what? What? I'm taking you out to dinner. <laughs> Are we celebrating something? Well, I just got an American Express card, and I want to break it in. Great. I hear you can use it to take your husband to Paris. I never heard that. Greece? You have a vivid imagination. Maybe you should get the American Express card.